Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's W9FFF Ham Radio Dude. A few episodes ago, I talked about the Yaesu FT65 and why I like this radio. I did get a request to not only manually program the radio and kind of go through some of the menu features, but also how to edit, delete, modify memory channels. So what you'll see on the bottom of my screen today is two repeaters in my area. One is a VHF and one is a UHF. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to walk through how to program 145.330 into this radio so it's actually functional in the radio. I'm also going to do the 443.475 repeater, but I'm going to make a couple of mistakes intentionally. And then what we're going to do is after we save the frequency in the radio, we're going to go through and we're going to modify the, the channel or the memory channel that we created. And finally, what we're going to do then is we're going to go through and we're going to delete these in case you don't want them anymore. So let's get started. I have my radio on and I'm in VFO mode. Now, if you're not in VFO mode, really all you got to do is hit that V slash M or VFO memory button on the bottom of the screen. And you'll see I already have this repeater programmed in the radio, but uh, we want to be in VFO mode. Uh, you might be in a different band like UHF. You might be in the FM broadcasting band. But right now, here I am on 146.520 in VFO mode. And to get started, we're going to do the first repeater, 145.330. So we did 145.330, and I automatically got an, a minus sign up here. And this is called the uh, automatic repeater shift. So I have a setting enabled, which I'll show you later, that automatically assumes the correct repeater shift based upon the frequency range that it's in. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go into the menu. This function button on the left side of the radio below the push to talk feels like an equal sign or two horizontal lines. You're going to hold it in for two seconds. And when you do that, all of a sudden you get all these options. Now I happen to be in option 25, but let's use the up and down arrows to scroll to option one and we'll just start from there. Here we are in option one, and you'll see APO, which is automatic power off. So now that I've selected, and you could tell it because it's like a black line or highlight, but now that we have it selected, we want to just tap that same function button, and we get into the APO menu. Now you'll see this arrow here, and then it says one hour, so I could adjust up and down to when I want my, my radio to power off because of inactivity. Uh, here we go. I have it set to an hour. If I just tap this, I'll be back in the main menu. Perfect. There are some menus that are a little bit different, and we'll get to that in just a moment. So what we want to do now to get this pro this channel programmed is we want to go to step eight, which is CTCSS. And now that we have it selected, we're going to hit that function button again. And you'll see that I have a CTCSS tone, and mine's already set to 107.2, so I'm lucky. But what if you weren't so lucky? Well, you'll see this arrow here is selected on TX and then it says 107.2. But if you tap that function button, 107.2 or the tone will start flashing. That means you are now prepared to use the up and down arrows to change the PL tone. So if yours was set to off, for example, you would just keep paging up until you found 107.2 or whatever your PL tone might be. There it is. I got it. And now if I hit that function button again, You'll notice it stops flashing and my arrow is still on TX. But what if I wanted to change the RX? I could use the page down. I can go to RX. I could tap the side. It'll flash and then I could adjust it up or down. And then I could tap again. But now this is what I was talking about earlier. What if I want to get out of the menu? Because every time I tap, it just kind of goes one more down. Well, this is what you got to do. When none of them are flashing, just hold down for two seconds that function button. And it'll bring us back into the menu. So we feel like we have our CTCSS set, and we, we technically we do, but it's not enabled. We're going to get to that in a few minutes, and I'll come back to that, but let's just continue down the menu. You know, the way the Yezu menu was set up, it was in alphabetical, or not maybe in alphabetical order. Yeah, it is alphabetical order, but there's, uh, there probably was a better way to do it. And it, it might have been like the most commonly used things could have been in the top of the menu. Uh, I digress, though. Um, so... It's still easy enough to figure everything out, right? So what we want to do is we're going to go to step 24, repeater. And again, tap that side function button, and your automatic repeater shift might be set to off. If yours is set to off, 
what you'll want to do is I usually enable it. It's a pretty good feature. It's generally pretty accurate. But all you have to do is tap that side button. You'll see it flashing again, and then you can go off or on. So again, tap the side function button, use the arrows to bring it on, and then here we go. And now I have, okay, so the mode is a negative offset and a 0.6. So we're good here on the shift. So I'm going to hold down, again, that function button, and it brings me back out to the menu. And we're just going to continue down. I set my RF squelch to, uh, I think, 3 or 5. So what I just did there is it didn't work because I was holding down the function button and I thought I wanted to get out of the menu. So I have to go back into the menu by holding it down and it remembered where I was. Now I just tap it and here we are, R squelch S3. And if I wanted to change it, all I have to do is hit the up or down arrows and then tap the, uh, the function button again. We're going to continue down here. The squelch type though, remember earlier I said that the PL tone wasn't actually set, even though it was set, it wasn't enabled. Here on step 29, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tap that function button, and you'll see my squelch type is set to off. Well, if this isn't set to something and you have a CTCSS tone, you're not going to get anything. So you could set it to pager or DCS or rev in. And I accidentally hit three there, so it just brought me back out to the menu, right? So again, I hold down and then 29 squelch type. And I'm going to continue until I find what I want to use, which happens to be T-Tone, but I'm just showing you all the options. So here we go. I have my transmit tone and all I have to do is tap that button and I am now back in my menu. And actually, real quick, I want to go back to uh, the repeater number 24. And I guess I didn't explain that great, but even if I have automatic repeater shift set to off, I could still change the offset and the shift. You know, I could just tap on it and make it whatever. So if this was a simplex frequency, I could leave that as simplex and so forth. So uh, keep that in mind. You know, for example, let's say I set this to positive right now and I go back out to the menu. And then I go back out. You see the positive on the main screen. That's because I set it to positive right there. So again, I'm going to set that to negative because this is a negative offset. And then I'm going to go up and I like my automatic repeater shift on. So I'm going to set that on real quick. And then I'm going to go back into the main menu and we just talked about the RF squelch. So let's go ahead. I'm sorry, we talked about the uh, squelch type. Let's go ahead and talk about the timeout timer. The repeater that I'm going to be, both of them actually, that I'm going to be connecting to have a timeout timer of three minutes. And so if I tap on timeout timer, all I have to do is hit up and down arrow and I set it to three minutes because that way if I time out, it's right about the same time that the repeater is going to time out anyway. And I don't talk for three minutes, but it's nice to have that enabled. So all you have to do is use the up and down arrows to set it to what you wish. And then again, tap that side function button to get back into the menu. Step 32 is power or option 32 is power. So I'm on power and I tap. And I have mine set to low, but you could set yours to high or mid. And again, tapping the function button gets back into the menu. I think you're kind of getting the hang of these things here. Uh, regardless, we're actually at a point now where we're able to test to see if this thing is functional and if this is actually working on the repeater before we actually save it into memory. I did pause the video and I did test that this repeater is functioning correctly. So everything I have, all information, is good at this moment. Now I want to program everything we just did into the radio and what i need to do to do that is i'm going to hold down the vfo memory button and when i do that now you'll see all these weird characters on the screen well this one's flashing so that's where i'm going to input my first character in my case it's going to be n for n9 hep so i'm going to hit the six three times there's your n and i can't just go to nine because if i do it's just gonna put the nine where it's flashing so Hold, hold or tap the function button, and now you could see it went to the next line. So now I'm going to type in the number 9, tap the function button again, and then HEP. So I'm going to continue that here. So here it is, N9 HEP. Well, that's all great and well, but how do we save this? I mean, that's what we want, right? So I'm going to hold down the VFO memory button. 
and it says memory in and you can see it went to 14 which is probably the first available memory channel i had so now if i go to the memory mode i you can see i have 13 is k5 tar 14 is n9 hep and then it goes back to one because i don't have any other memory channels after that now what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut the video out but i'm going to program 443.475 Crystal Lake N9 HEP into here, but I'm going to make two intentional errors. The first error I'm going to make is I'm going to do the wrong frequency, so I'm going to do 444-475, and I'm going to label this uh, N9 IEP. And after I save it, I'll come back in and then we'll walk through how to make some modifications and some changes. I got the information put into the radio incorrectly. And I notice it now. Okay, so now I have memory bank 15, N9 IEP. Well, that's supposed to be N9 HEP. And so what I'm probably actually going to do as well is probably add a U on the end of that or a UHF or something along those lines. So I can distinguish the difference between my N9 HEP VHF and my N9 HEP UHF. But here I am on memory bank 15. That's incorrect. And I'm going to go back into the menu on the function button on the side. And I'm going to go to step 20. As you can see, I already have it selected because I... Had, had kind of basically pre-gamed this, but here I am on the memory tag, and I'm going to tap the function. And when I do that, you're going to get the name tag to flash a couple times, and then it's going to show you the actual name of your uh, channel or your memory channel. So I know that N9 IEP is incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Because the I should be an H. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these up and down arrows to go to the I. You'll see the I is flashing, and now I'm going to go, and I'm going to change it to H. And as I mentioned, I want to go ahead and I want to make this a UHF or U. But I could also do this. I could use this little star VM button down here to have a dash. And I think that's kind of cool. Now that I have a dash, N9 HEP dash, and we'll just call it U. I'm very content with that naming convention. But what happens now if I click the function button and hold it down? Does it save? Let's find out. Here we go. It's flashing name tag. And it did. It saved it, right? So now if I go back out into my memory, it'll show N9 HEP U. And this one shows N9 HEP because this is 14. That's my VHF one. And there's my U. Another thing I think that is important to mention is if I go back into my menu while I'm in this memory channel, for example, here I am. And if I were to change any of these options, for example, the squelch level, everything I change in here while I'm under that memory channel is going to save to the radio. Uh, as you see now, TTN is enabled. But if I go down to the squelch type and I change this to say off, and then I hold down that function button and I hold down that function button again, you'll see my TTN is no longer there. And if I turn off the radio and I turn it back on, all of a sudden it's not there. So any changes you make in the menu while in memory mode will make those changes on that channel. Here we go again. I'm going to hold this down and I better change that back real quick. Oop. So here we are, T-tone, and I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to hold it down. And now I have that. T-Tone enabled again. So we have everything programmed in. We've done it on multiple channels. We have our tones modified or we have our channel name modified now. And you can go through modifying and I think you understand how to do that. But we may never know what frequency we're on unless you're on a memory channel. You can hit this band button once and it'll actually show you what frequency you're on. So then I'm like, oh yeah, that's wrong. Well, unfortunately. I can't find a way to to change or modify the frequency that the radio it has in memory. Uh, the best thing to do is to delete the memory. And again, I'll just show you here. If I go to 14, it'll show that I'm on 145.330 or the VHF one. So I'll hit band again. I'll go back up to 15. I just don't see a way to modify it. So the best thing you could do is you could delete the channel. And to delete the channel is kind of a little bit of a trick. Again, go back into the menu while you're on that memory channel. Then you want to go down to step 18, which is memory delete. Okay. 
And there's two things you could do here. You could scroll to the channel that you want to delete, which in my case is going to be 15 because that's what I know is wrong. And if I hold this down, the function button, if I hold it down and then I leave the menu, you'll see that I still have item 15 here. So it didn't delete, but if I hold it down and I go back into step 18, and instead of holding it down, I just tap it once, 15's gone, right? So now, now that 15's gone, I'm going to hold down the function button for two seconds, and again for two seconds, and I'm going to get back to the main menu, and you'll see I'm on memory one now, and if I go backwards, I'm only on memory 14, so it deleted 15, and then essentially I could recreate the, the channel again from scratch if I needed to. So that gives us a basic understanding of how to program memory channels in the FT65, how to edit them or modify them, and how to delete them, and then you can create a new memory bank if you needed to. But what if you wanted to do a factory reset for whatever reason? Well, I'm going to show you, if you turn your radio off and you hold down the push to talk key, and then this is called the monitor key right here, the one with a single horizontal line, hold those down and then turn your radio on, and you'll see a white screen. It'll stay white until you let go of those buttons. And once you let go of those buttons, you're going to be presented with a bunch of different features. Uh, you could reset everything. You could reset your memory and so forth. One of the cool things, too, is you could then set, let's see, where's F8? You could set your dual display as well. So if I hit that button right there, I just tapped it when I had dual display on. What happens? Oh, cool. Now I have my repeater name. And I have the frequency, so I don't have to hit that band button every time, right? Cool. Cool. And so forth. So you get the point. Uh, I thought that was a kind of a neat feature, but if you did want to reset anything to factory default, you would go into that advanced menu as well. Again, you have the radio off. You hold down the push to talk key and the monitor key. Turn the radio on. Let go. And then there you go. Uh, additionally, you could clone the radio if you had the right cable and you had multiple FT65s and so forth. Um, so, you know, with that, I think that's a pretty good basis on how to get started with using your FT65 and manually programming it in case you don't have a programming cable. Of course, if you do want a programming cable, I did make a video uh, a few weeks ago that shows how to make your own programming cable. So you could take a look at that video, see if it interests you at all and give it a shot. Uh, but anyway, guys, I appreciate your time checking out my channel, and if you would be so kind to like, comment, and subscribe, and especially comment if you do know of a way to change the frequency without deleting the memory and recreating the channel, you know, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is W9FFF, the ham radio dude, 73.